in the final bit of the Every Bit Counts Challenge for August of 2023. This is week five. I have five days left. <laughs> Let's see what we can get up to this week. The Every Bit Counts Challenge was initiated by Je Jessica over at Three Rivers Homestead. Coming in September, we have the Stock It September Challenge. And I'm hoping you'll subscribe and follow me while I do the Stock It September Challenge. Come on down to the countertop now and see what I'm up to today. I'm having another day where I feel like I'm hitting the ground running. I have a list of things I need to get done and I feel like I'm going to be able to accomplish it. The project I'm working on right now is the lemon thyme and thyme that I dehydrated in a recent video. I've uh, got them all dry, now I want the dehydrator off my counter. Let's get these put away. Just have to strip everything off of the stems. It's easier to do this sometimes when it's dry. My friend Lynn over at Bucket List Homestead has started a hashtag stock it September challenge. For the month of September, whenever you go and buy groceries, you stock up just $10 for your pantry. Show us what you can get for $10 in your area. I know that some parts of the states and certain cities are going to get different prices and different bargains than we will here in Ontario. And even different stores that you go to, you'll get different prices. I know for my part of the Stock at September Challenge, I will be shopping at Metro. It's not nearby. It's almost an hour to get to it for me but uh, I know how to shop their flyers really well and I know I love their products and uh, I'm a Metro girl through and through. I worked in a Metro for 18 years, so that's my, uh, my connection to them. Now, we do have a local store to us that uh, it's privately owned and he puts on sales that he calls inflation busters. So I might have to stop in there and uh, pick up some of those fly those items as well. But uh, once a week or one, whenever it is that you go shopping, you uh, go ahead and pick up just $10 each week to stock your pantry. By the end of the month, you've got $40 worth of extra products in your pantry. And if you got them on a bargain price, that could be a lot of food. It doesn't take much. Now with all the inflation, it used I think it used to be a $5 challenge, $5 Fridays or something. And uh, with all the inflation that we've got, it's hard to do anything on $5 in Canada. Lemon time, it smells amazing. I'm lacking jars right now. I have to make a point of going to a couple of stores and finding some more jars. $15 for 12 jars is getting to be a little bit crazy. It may not look like much, but there's my lemon thyme, and I can harvest more if the plant rebounds before fall. That'll get me through quite a long time. I don't use a lot of thyme, the herb thyme. I mean, I use a lot of thyme, but I don't use a lot of the herb. Okay, now I'm getting into the regular. Enough of the bad thyme jokes. Um, what am I doing? I'm supposed to be putting this in a baggie. <laughs> I've labeled the baggie. This is time. Uh, this took a lot longer than I anticipated, so that was a lot of time. <laughs> I did it again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this next bit is not a food preservation exactly, but it's a sanity preservation and it will save your food a little. Um, do you ever have a problem with fruit flies? This time of year, I've been bringing fruit flies home with the bananas and they get into my tomatoes and they spoil my tomatoes. Can you see that? It's gotten buggy. We have a compost container that we keep on the counter that just gets emptied every day, but it still attracts a lot of, um, a lot of fruit flies. I have a fruit fly trap method that works. Let me show you. So here I have a disposable container. It came with Caesar dog food in it, but you could use a sour cream or a cottage cheese container, margarine tub, any kind of the bottom off of a pop bottle, anything that you can get that you, that's disposable. You're not gonna wanna keep it after it's full of bugs. You need one drop of dish soap. That's even, that's even more than I need. It breaks the surface tension so that the bugs hit the top of the fluid and they fall right in. That's the science of why we put a drop of uh, detergent in things. 
And this is apple cider vinegar, and you just want to put in a quarter inch or so in the bottom of the container, depending on the size of your container, is going to determine how much. Some just regular white sugar, if you don't have white sugar in the house, something else will do. Just a something sweet. Now we're just going to mix that. The fermenting in the apple cider, I just put in a little bit of sugar there. The fermenting in the apple cider is going to feed on the sugars. And uh, that's all there is to that part of it. The sugar's not even completely dissolved. It doesn't matter. You want a sheet of plastic wrap, just enough to cover that container and seal it. It doesn't have to be huge. This is a really small container. And you want to, if you wanted to, you could tape that down. This is sticking well enough. And then you just want a toothpick or, um, the tip, the very fine tip of a knife or a skewer or something very small. The idea is that you're poking the hole the fruit fly can fit in, but it won't be able to find its way back out. But with that soap in that, in that fluid, it shouldn't be able to anyways. And you want enough holes so that the odor of the, oh, that, these holes are a little larger than they should be. Um, you want the odor of the apple cider to come out and you put that near the source of your fruit fly. So in my case today it's going to be near the tomatoes and uh, that will preserve that area. It'll attract the fruit flies. They go in and they can't get back out. It works. We did this in the grocery industry. We did this in the uh, cut fruit and produce department and we would have four or five of them around when it got to be fruit fly season. and. Uh, it works. It's health and safety um, health unit approved because it's chemical free and you just throw it out and replace it whenever you need to. Easy peasy. No chemicals. And if your kid gets a hold of it, they won't want to taste it because it's going to be full of bugs and it's vinegar. They won't, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> and now on to the real productivity of the day. I have zucchini. The last of it. There doesn't seem to be much more coming off of my plants. I'm going to take this zucchini and I'm going to shred it. I wrote a list again last night so that I could come up with the things I needed to do this morning. The herbs are done. I actually did the corn yesterday. I still have all these other, th oh and I did uh, tomato salsa yesterday. I still have these things to deal with. Let's see how many more of these I can knock off the list today. I've got my Cuisinart out again. I'm going to put this lar the tall spindle in. My blade has a fine shred or a coarse shred. I want the coarse shred. And I'm just gonna shred my zucchini. This zucchini is quite large. I've cut most of the way through it here already. And often the large zucchini will have a lot of seeds inside. I have found that a, an ice cream scoop is the best thing for removing those seeds. And they're good for the chickens. So guess what? Chickens are getting a treat today. Now I'll chop that up and I'll shred it. Speculated that squash seeds, pumpkin seeds, etc., are great dewormers for the chickens. So as well as the fact that they love them, it might be good for their gut health as well. Now I'm just gonna chop these to the right size. To fit in the hopper. Okay, that didn't take long at all. And I now have zucchini shreds. A lot of people say save zucchini, shred it, and freeze it for zucchini loaf. Well, that's an option for sure. Not necessarily one that we use a lot. I'm going to transfer this stuff to um, a stainless steel bowl. I'm going to let this sweat for a little bit, drain, whatever you want to call it. You know that zucchini, the moisture comes out of it as soon as you cut it. So I'm going to let it sit for a little while. Then I'm going to strain it and I'll freeze it. While I have my food processor out, is there anything else I need to put through it? No, everything else is separate. 
Okay, so let's go on to the beet greens. They're really, they really need to be done. Okay, all those pickled beets I did the other day, I saved the beet tops. There are a couple of ways I can use these. I can chop them up, throw them in stir fries and soups and stews and anywhere I would put spinach. The stems are edible too. I can steam them just like spinach and put them in um, smoothies or just have them as a side dish, which I eat. I quite enjoy that. This one's a little too green for my liking. But I quite enjoy it as, as a spinach, as beet greens, beet tops. I serve them with uh, butter and salt and a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Very high in iron. I think they're high in calcium too. For me, they're high and delicious. I'm not going to save all of these stems, although that is a delicious part of it as well. I'm not going to eliminate them entirely, like these little bits will be fine. Put them in a baggie. I'm just going to freeze them right back in the same bag they were in. In the winter, I give the chickens greens and uh, especially since they can't forage for them in the winter time, I like to make sure they're getting green. So I'll take these uh, less desirable leaves that I'm coming across and I'll, uh, I'll put them in for the chickens. I might dehydrate them. I've done it before where I've dehydrated uh, kale and Brussels sprout leaves. And the chickens, I've rehydrated them overnight and just took them out to the chickens and put them with their fresh feed or with their feed fresh in the morning. And they hydrate, rehydrate beautifully. And the chickens love, they haven't had greens for a couple of weeks. They love the addition of the greens. I know that Dan won't eat these, so I'm just going to make sure there's enough for me and they're in a way that I will use them. I think I might have some for lunch today. Okay, the rest will go to the chickens. My spin cycle is going. <laughs> I can hear the squeaking. My laundry room is just on the other side of this wall. I'm not going to put a date on them because I know they're from this garden season and they have to be used up relatively quickly. And the chickens don't care what the date is. So for this, I'm just going to chop these up and put them in another baggie and label it chicken food. While these would still be good to put in my bag of vegetables for vegetable broth, the red component in them would turn your vegetable broth red like beets. So I don't use those in that for that purpose. This is chicken feed. This can have vegetables, um, zucchini seeds, pumpkin seeds, any of those things that I just dealt with a few minutes ago. It can also have bits of leftover meat. If you got part of a pork chop left over or part of a steak or something left over, you can give that to your chickens too. They love to chew on the bones. They'll pick at the bones for an hour. And the beet greens are done. And the beet greens are done. That leaves me with carrots, peppers, and potatoes O'Brien. Potato O'Brien. Uh, it helps if I can spell O'Brien carrots. And what did I say was the other one? Peppers. I also have tomatoes coming off of the field every day. What can I do with these? I want to do a roasted salsa. There we go. Now I can fold this in half again. There we go. There's my list. That's reasonable.